Hey guys, you guys are about to watch my new show. Okay, it's a new concept we created. I'm super excited about it. And if you guys have been watching me so far uh, for a while, you guys have been following me for a while, maybe you, you know that we we're about to hit 200 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So I'm super excited about that. Again, guys, on my YouTube channel, thank you so much. And I'm super excited about my YouTube community in particular because we're about to hit 200 subscribers. So if you guys aren't subscribed already, you might, maybe you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button right now. Big things are coming. I'll see you in the video. Hello and welcome to the Big Boss Show. It's a new show where we, every week, we come to you with a real person that may have not always been a big boss his entire life, but shares his story and perspective, which we can learn from. I'm your host, Davron Karimov, and today I am joined by a very, very special guest. This guy, Andreas Jose Kalimas. Man, how long have I known you for? Or how, how long have you known me? Bro, since high school, we go back. So, you know, we've known each other since you joined in, right? In tech. Yeah. I was a year above you, but then, you know, we came to the same class and shit, and we've known each other since then. We've chilled. So, how long is that? How many, how many years? Like, since what, 2012? Since right? 2012. Seven years? So, wow. I mean, that's gotta be like, I mean, I'm about to turn 21, like next month, so. And that means I've known this guy like, like a third or a quarter, like up to a third of, of my entire life. And who knew he was so special? <laughs> All right, anyways, Andreas is a very special guest, which I'm delighted to bring on the show today. He worked with me as one of the first employees in my funding company. I remember December 24th was the day mm. we started, we first started. Um, he, he was one of our first employees and helped us turn into a million dollar funding company. I, I, you know, I don't think we were doing a million at that time, but we were funding like five, 600 a month, yeah, you know? Five, now he works at one of the biggest, maybe the biggest, I don't know, direct commercial lender in the country. Can I say the name? Oh uh, yeah. Par Funding, that's his company where he helps business owners achieve their goals through a variety of creative financing products. What do you think about that? Good intro? Yeah, I do. <laughs> right. Jose, welcome. Thank you for coming on the Big Boss Show. Thank you. All right. so. I've known you for a very, very long time, I and mean, we met. We met in high school, but uh, how how did you first start working for me? Yeah, yeah. So I was I was looking into um, you know different sort of lucrative types of industries, different uh, financial based industries, because I wanted to get into a sort of sales, yeah, um, especially types of different business, diff different businesses. Frankly, so I was I was just playing around on the Google machine, you know, seeing what was what. And then I heard through one of our mutual friends, Gary, oh, that yeah. you worked in a different business lendings and you had the startup going. And I looked more into it. Like I looked on your website. I found out about how different, you know, commercial lending products work like MCAs, um, term loans, business loans, different mm -hmm. types of credit products that are, that work for, you know, in the, in the business industry. And I, I worked in real estate, so I was familiar with that end and that different sort of, you know, sales approach to doing business. But yeah. that's, that's more, you know, residential. You're working with people in that end. Now I wanted to see, you know, what I can do with businesses now. And I figured, you, you know, you were doing this. Yeah. As a startup, I was really excited. So when I figured, you know, hey, look, you know, he's doing this now, let me, let me hit him up, see what's up. Yeah, and who you would turn into, what it turned into. I mean, and Andreas here, he, he's like my project. For those of you that don't know uh, my story, like I, I started this industry like a year ago, um, well, over a year ago. Um, I, didn't, I had no idea, I knew nothing about this industry, came in here um, into this business funding, and, and now I'm still here uh, a, a year later, I stuck around. And so he, he's like that uh, similarly in that he came in, you came in this industry, you didn't know nothing, mm. you just... You, you learned the product, learned, learned, learned about businesses. Um, so, so my, my, I mean, my story, when I, my, when I started, I mean, like, I would say um, around uh, spring of last year, 2018, um, I, had, I had a really big issue in that my issue was that if I, if I didn't, um, I, had, I had student loans come up in that um, I didn't drop out of school. Like, you hear all these people dropping out of schools and become CEOs. I didn't drop out of school. I just never went to class. Right. So like I, the first time I tried a couple of times going to, to, to college, the first time I went, um, I literally sat in the first class for 10 minutes and then I walked out. So 
that, that was my first college experience. My second college experience, I just stopped turning in assignments. You know, there was more important things uh, I was focusing on in my mind. Um, but yeah, so, so, one, so once the school found out that I wasn't going to classes, they were like, well, we gave you all this money. We gave you something like 10 grand to go to school. Yeah, you're not going. So that basically, uh, you know, dis disavows the agreement that we had. And now all your student loans are due immediately. Um, so I, I, had, I had to come up with 10 grand that I didn't have, right? I, at this time, I probably didn't, didn't even have, maybe I was even, like I had a negative net worth at that point. I don't even know. I, it was bad. It was just bad. Um, and, so, and so I didn't want to ask my parents for it, right? Because, uh, you know, it was my mistake. They, they obviously wanted to push me through school. Um, my family is very big on school. Um, I think like same thing with like a lot of immigrant um, parents. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they, they, I didn't want to ask my parents for money because it was like my fault. I wanted to own up to it. So basically I just started applying for every single job that I could that, that would give, take the time to, to give me an interview um, up until the point where I found this industry and I found out it was a place I wanted to stay. Um, so then in September, um, after working at, a, at this one company in Long Island City for a while, uh, I left and started my own company, Funder Hunt, which you guys know, hopefully. Um, and from September to, in seven months, we did 205,000 in revenue in the first seven months from zero, from not having any money, no resources, you know, no team. It was literally just me on an Excel spreadsheet, like just, just like finding out like who, like who, like who inquired recently and like who I was interested in uh, working with, right? And who's interested in working with me. So uh, I want to talk about you. Like, wh where did you grow up? Uh, were you born here? Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, um, well, I grew up in New York my whole life. I was born in Queens. Oh. Um, so you were, you were born here? Yeah, I was born oh, in Queens. Oh. I forget the hospital. I think the hospital was closed. It was like St. John's or some shit. But yeah, anyway, so I lived in um, Washington Heights with my dad mm. after living in New Jersey when I was younger. Like, I was all over the place. So, you know, my mom and dad had a rough relationship. Where, where is that, Washington Heights? Oh, it's in um, like the very top of Manhattan, like oh, right. before you cross the bridge into the Bronx. So you're a New Yorker. Yeah, straight in New York, sweet. straight of New Yorker. And yeah, so I went to school here, lived here, lived in Puerto Rico a bit, and then I moved to Staten Island in uh, middle school, when my mom nice. first bought the house, and that's actually kind of what got me into this whole whole sort of space. Actually, when I and I got the savvy of like why my mom bought the house. Like, what was her whole thought process of? Oh, let me get this uh, property and get a mortgage on it, rent out the other units. Oh, these other units, you know, cover the cost of the mortgage. Now I'm living for free. Oh, wow. how does this work? Like Wait, basic real estate investment. So your mom tenants. bought a multifamily deal. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, I, at least but yeah. I mean, there's tons to learn from that. Exactly. So yeah, it's like the basic tenet of investing. So it was kind of like a spark there that actually kind of leads up to here. Interestingly enough. Well, yeah. any siblings? Um. Yeah, I have. Oh, that's a weird situation. So yeah, I have. Um. Four sisters and a brother. They're all half siblings. Um. Three are from my father's side. Two are from my mother's side. I've only ever known my brother and my sister from my mother's side. We're wow. speaking of, I'll be meeting my sister later today. Um, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's huge. I mean, you, did you grow up with, with all of them, all those siblings? Um, no, not directly. So I've kind of been raised as a single child, but I always, you know, visited my sister mostly from my mother's side, and then my brother and I had a strained relationship as well. But me and my brother have become really close recently, actually. I like, you know, really love him. He's a decade older than me. My sister's eight years old, man. My other three sisters from my father's side are since my father's, you know, from a previous relationship, and he's a he's an old man now. So, um, that one is like in her fifties, yeah. and the other the other one is in her late forties, and um, one of them passed away years ago from breast cancer. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry to hear that. Oh yeah. So what does your brother do now? Oh, my brother. Oh, he's like semi retired at this point because uh, he. <laughs> uh, give you the gist of his story so yeah he he's worked he's done programming since he was in high school so he's a talented programmer um so and his his father's a, a lawyer so he actually got into the legal field kind of like at his father's behest um he worked as, as a paralegal in real estate for a bit so and throughout that whole time was the whole like crypto bubble 
So my brother with his programming knowledge, his computer savvy, he recognized the whole like value proposition of Bitcoin and the whole crypto space and really got into it. And um, we if just take a look at a Bitcoin chart. Yeah. yeah. Let's just say that reflects well, when my brother's you, investments. When did he buy? Uh, when did he buy? That's a good question. So it's funny. So he used to get paid in Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, when he did a part-time programming job, but then he lost all of it in Mount Gox. How do you lose Bitcoin? In Mount Gox, the, the ex- Mount Gox held all the Bitcoins. Oh, okay. So, yeah. if you're familiar with Mount Gox, you know, just look it up. So that happened to him. Nonetheless, he still, um, even since then, he still was into Bitcoin. So I'll just kind of leave it at that for his like privacy sake. But yeah, at this point, mm-hmm. he's semi-retired. Um, he still works on some crypto projects on the side, just for like shits and gigs, for fun. Um, Got you. So I mean, you you've been you've been in the industry, uh, the business funding industry for a while. Do you have any like stories like working with um, business owners, clients? Oh yours? man, I mean it's it's always a story. I mean just because each yeah. and every each and every conversation, each and every owner, each and every situation is just very different, very unique. And these these guys are characters, you know. I agree with that. These are these are people like, you know, I'm talking to a fifty year old, you know, log, you know, logistics company owner. Right, who's you know only known him and his business for his whole life, right? And he's very he's very good at what he does, right? So he knows what he knows, and he's the boss. He's the boss in his area. So they're they're kind of like interesting personalities, right? I mean, I mean, some you, of them are startups too, and then they're you know they're all over the place and very very interesting. Like recently, I spoke with um, some lady who has like three grow ops in Colorado. And she was telling me about how, like, on oh, the past two years, like, the price per gram of crop has gone up and down. And, like, she's noticing yeah, a change in her competition and shit. So now she's trying to take advantage of the price going, mm-hmm. going back up. So she wants funding to, to get a new greenhouse stuff. She needs the, the whole HVAC systems. Mm-hmm. The, so to, car- to drive the cost down? Um, no, just to expand the market now. Mm-hmm. So now she wants to expand her ability to grow more. Yeah. and Grow more so, wheat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was a very interesting conversation where like she actually survived cancer and the conversation I had with her she was like look I've been putting this all because I was like had medical bills and shit and which is a nice note on the side because her credit is perfect aside from her you yeah. know her medical bills and collections but what's your credit score uh, it, it's not like score dependent right the way yeah, yeah, do yeah things. Of course. so everything else is fine payments are great right um, but she has this lien on it now we manually on the right, you know, at least on mm-hmm. our end. So we, we just know that up front. We like the industry, the trend, healthy banks. Yeah. We're excited to work with her. Now the timing is not quite there yet. She wants to do, get this done in December. I mean, I mean, what, 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 what kind of what kind of lean though? Because I don't really, I never seen that as an issue. Uh, in, it's a collections. Like, it's like a fifty thousand dollar collection or something more than that. It's crazy. Was it from a funding company? What? No, uh, her cancer <laughs> treatment. Oh, yeah, yeah you're yeah, talking yeah, about medical yeah. bills. Oh, yeah. Now that's just and one. Now, like, then there's other merchants and business owners who, you know, they they're very. They're all okay. over the place, man. <laughs> I mean, I have I have one story. I have, I'm going to, you know, I'm I'm gonna go into this more. But you know how how some merchants are like are like stuck up and like. But like they think they're they're big guys, oh, too big uh, to be taking this capital, right? Yeah. Or they're too busy for this hassle, you know. The merchant could say, you know, I wanted to close this yesterday. Why are you making me send you all this information? You know, oh my God. I wanted to close this yesterday. You know, I, I had an approval once uh, for this business owner. Um, you know, it was for six figures. Um, this was in August. I'm not gonna give you the name of the the, the, the business. Mm-hmm. But uh, he probably, if, he's, if he would be listening to this, he knows what I'm talking about. Um, so so, uh, so this business, uh, this business um, they had approval for six figures. And so we were about to get to funding. Um, and then all of a sudden, underwriting asked for a tax return. And so the, the business owner was like, tax return? Why are you making me send all, you know, why are you making sending me all this information? I have guys that are willing to fund me without all this crazy steps. Like, I'm just going to go do business with them. And that's it. So thank you very much. That's literally what he, like, like paraphrasing it. That's literally what he told me. I have people that, that, that want to fund me without all this information. Oh so I'm going to go work with them. But thank you. And then so I'm like, 
I forget, I forget uh, no, I know his name. I didn't forget his name, but I'm like, Andreas, like, I'm, I'm talking to you. Yeah. You came to me for a reason. That's what I told him, like, <laughs> um, and, you know, we're not asking for a lot of information for to fund you 100,000 or 200,000. <laughs> All we asked for so far is, you know, your, I don't know, what, what do we ask for, your bank statements? Yeah, mm-hmm. bank statements, some information about your business. You and you want us to give us two two hundred thousand, right? Yeah, unsecured capital, cash money, wire to you today. But we just want to see it. Ta- nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Not doing it. Absolutely refuse. <laughs> like, I mean, we don't even know if you have a business, but <laughs> I mean, he can go to Vegas and bet it all on black if he wanted to. You know, like that's all we're asking is some basic <laughs> documentation back from him. Like, hey, at least you know. we can trust you that you've done business, right? At the end of the day, it's not it's not my capital. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, but you know, I got lucky. I uh, did, I lucked out in that uh, this lender um, was willing to give the funding. Um, if it was below six figures, they were willing to waive the tax return. Mm-hmm. So so we basically I I took I said look, I'm gonna get your approval for ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars because we can only round to the nearest hundred. So you take this funding, there's no tax return. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. But he did it, you know? Cause like, I guess he really didn't want to send that tax return. I always act like it's the first call when I'm talking to like business owners. Like even if, even if someone, you know, how they go on my website and they get funding for me one time and then later on they, they, they reapply for mm-hmm. renewal or, you know, refinance or they want to get additional capital. They don't think of, they don't think of it as, oh, I'm just going to give you know, I'm just gonna give them, they're gonna give me a call. They think of it, oh, let me go back to the site and reapply. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So, I don't know, like, uh, one, one thing I learned, uh, one thing my team leader taught me in, uh, in, uh, in Long Island City was like, when, when you're following up with a merchant, act like it's the first call. Mm-hmm. Like, act like, like you just, you just like, just fought, like, like the, the normal thing, like, hey, I just noticed you inquired, or I don't know what, what, you, what, what you say to them. You know, hey, we spoke a while ago. You know, but it's like, I mean, that, that's the way I was taught. But I feel like also there's this kind of an element of like, you're securing more financing. Like, what are you doing? You know, yeah. like, like it's like a little bit taboo because like people don't like talking about money. Um, yeah, that's a big thing too. Like, especially if you call a merchant while they're with customers or, yeah. um, you know, with, just like bad timing for the merchant to speak about something like, you know, investment with, with you know, like us as lenders or, you know, asking you as a broker to go find them an investor for their use of funding, right? Like, oh, hey, especially if it's something like, like when I call a merchant, my specialty is debt consolidation, right? So one of the first things I want to know whenever I speak to someone and really get the bottom to and like solve this issue with them is like, hey, are you already in debt for your business? Mm-hmm. So that timing is really important, right? When you're calling the merchant and mm-hmm. they're with, you know, again, with customers or something. So you want to get that time, get that schedule in. Yeah, definitely. And like work with them on their time, especially if it's like a busier merchant. I don't know. It's sometimes it just like turns into this uh, running joke where like I act like I don't know them or they act like they don't know me or, <laughs> but then like if, if they bring it up, like, hey, it's you. Like, um, yeah, oh, hey, you, you know, must have been a duplicate. Yeah, hey, Johnny. Address, yeah. You know? Great speaking you know. to you again. It's now a good time. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing. One thing. Uh, there's this guy. Uh, like motivation guy out there. Uh, his name is like, uh, Dan Locke. I don't know if you heard him. He says. Uh, and I always try to like. I always try to like act smart and like, like, f- like forget the advice that I hear. Like even though it might be like really solid advice, mm-hmm. and then I go test it out on my own. So like one thing he says is like, don't ever answer incoming calls. And so. And you kind of you kind of experienced that because I stopped taking your calls, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, basically he was like, you know, when has ever an incoming call been any been any productive for you like ever? Mm. So, un- unscheduled, unscheduled uh, incoming calls. Yeah. Um. So I was like, all right, cool. And then you know later on, I mean, we have the business line, right? People could call into Thunder Hunt, um, mm. offices. So, I pick up the phone. It's a merchant asking for a payoff letter. It's it's someone that thought I was another company. It's you know <laughs> they're, they're they're like, oh I'm just yeah I'm just calling because I want to know why you pulled twice from my account this week and I'm yeah. like I never gave you any money like that wasn't us, but yeah like I don't know it's just I, that I just, that's happened to me before. Some guy yeah. called me up asking why we had a UCC on him. I'm like, 
we don't do UCCs. Did you default? Yeah. And he's like, no, I was paying you guys on time. And it turns out he was never working with us. Yeah. It was one of his other lenders that was in our consolidation. Yeah. And they, since this is what ended up happening. So this is why, you know, it's funny you're saying like, how, when is an incoming call ever productive for you? This was so unproductive for me. <laughs> you don't understand. It took me like two hours to figure out with phone calls and bugging like my boss and stuff to finally figure out like, oh, you know what's funny? The other lenders just decided to be like scummy to this guy and found out that they consolidated with us. So they decided to file UCC on him. So I mean, what is that though? I don't even know what, what the UCC is. Like. Uh, UCC, it's uh, like a judgment, although it uh, shows up on your business credit. So pretty much if you want to apply for funding again, they would see the UCC on the file, see whatever the remaining balance is with oh, certain lender. That? And then they say, like, let's say I was, you know, lender A. And, you know, on the bank statements are clean, nothing there, right? Hey, what's this UCC? You know, you have a UCC from yeah. Yeah. A VCG, you know, Velocity Capital Group, or, you know, name any lender, right? Like, but well, what's this about? And then, you know, it's, it's just another hurdle for the merchant to go over and sometimes uh, an A lender or a more uh, conservative or strict underwriting lender is not going to work with them again. So but some lenders the, will do this just to decide to be, you know, unfortunate. I mean, from my experience, most of the people don't know they have a UCC. Like, and that's like, exactly it too. Like, like you have a UCC, has it been resolved? They're like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, are they looking at their business credit report? 99.99%. Uh, no, they're not. But you could have UCCs from like from like a vendor or something, right? Like oh yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So if you have a net thirty with a vendor and you know you you, you paid you know forty five days later or some shit, they're gonna be like, yo, what's up? I'm gonna file UCC on you. Yeah, I'm gonna file UCC. I want. Yeah, <laughs> that actually happened. Like I think uh, one a business owner had a one of, one of those. Thankfully, they're relatively easy to clear it up. I think we cleared it up for the guy like a week later or something. But like, you know, why would did this even happen, right? Yeah, and so and so back back to like how uh, merchants are, are stuck up. Like, I mean, I use that word. Like, I don't really think that they are. I'm just like, I, I lack of a better word. Well, yeah, like, like at face value, it's stuck up. They're just they're not. They, like, this is what I try to tell a merchant if they're like humble enough to accept it. Like, you know your business right okay. much better than anyone else. You've been doing it for 15 years. Now, I'm a lender. I've been doing. I do this day in day out. I lend my own money. Yeah. I know how this works. I look at credit reports all day. I know how this works. Now, really? looking at your file, looking at you know the basic underwriting standards. Now, I'm not an underwriter, so underwriters do much more thorough due diligence than I do. Yes, yeah, so but there's reasons for. Yeah. Surprise! Looking at credit reports. Yeah. Well, it helps you sell a deal if you know the guys yeah, being very stuck definitely. up is like I deserve a credit grade um, type of funding product. Well, Mr. And, Jones, if we look you at know, your Mr. Experience. Jones, you have two judgments. You have a 550 credit and your time in business has only been, you know, four years and you're asking me to, you know, give you an A grade lending product here. I'm sorry, I can't. We can do the starter program here. Yeah. We can develop the relationship. Or if he's asking for, you know, like an A grade funding amount, like I want a full blown, I want 150% of my monthly revenue. Yeah. And you're going into your cold season or something. That's like that, that's too high a risk for me, man. Like if you checked off these other risk parameters, like if you did have that 800 credit, mm -hmm. I could do it. Yeah. But unfortunately not, you know. So it's kind of like we need to bridge that gap with them, and unfortunately, it just doesn't work sometimes. And the communication can be difficult depending on the merchant's personality. Like they can be very stubborn and be like, "I deserve, you know, two-year term on my." Yeah. You know, 100 percent, 150 percent of my monthly revenue. It's like I can't do that. All right, um, and I definitely like your pro your your programs, your products. Like I, I definitely mm -hmm. think that uh, you guys you guys do have a lot of comp like competitive advantage mm -hmm. and a lot in what you bring to the table for business owners. Oh yeah, like it's it's crazy. But what what I think like the way I the way I look at it, like honestly, to this point, like I've gotten to this point, like to this point in this industry, I've been working here so long. It's like it's not whether or not you're gonna take the financing. Mm -hmm. It's literally like I know you're gonna take the financing. Like you're gonna take it within the next six months of your business. Exactly. You're gonna take the funding. You're gonna need it. It's about tailoring the option to the use of funding. Like it's always every business can use money. And right. a lot of them, like obviously when it comes to funding, they take the money for a reason and it's to make more money with it. So it's like, you know, circle back to the use of funding. When do you need the money? What are you gonna use it for? Most importantly, 
when and circle back to the use of funding, this is where they come in as the merchant. Like, hey, merchant, yeah. you're using this for inventory. How long does it take you to sell that inventory and see that return on investment? Hey, it only takes me three months. Okay, then why do you need the money for a year? Let's, let's do a nice, you know, cheaper for me, cheaper for you, you know, less risky for me, cheaper for you. We can do this more often. Yeah. We can help your business grow and we yeah. can tailor the term for you. Hey, look, I can approve you for a term amount. Let's say they wanted a year on the term. I can do, you know, let's bridge the gap there. You only need it for three months. You want a year term on it for whatever reason. You want to be in debt longer and pay more expensive, you know, more cents on the dollar for the money because it's riskier to me. Why do that? Let's tailor the term for what you're using the money for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there has to be that communication, I think, back and forth with um, lender or broker and and the business owner, because everyone, you know, like I, I've heard you say this before, you know, what matters isn't really the rate or the cost of the money. What matters is the term. You know, if I'm going to yeah. lend you money, I can lend you a million dollars mm-hmm. and I want a thousand percent back. But if the term is 100 years, you know. You know, yeah. Am I even going to be alive to get paid? <laughs> right? look, it's it, free money. It, it, so everyone wants free money. Now, look, I want to invest in your business because I want to invest in your business. I, you know, let's let's share in the profit here. Let's grow together. Let's have this as a win-win and develop this together. Now, sometimes they legitimately... Can I, can I just interrupt you for a second? Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that there's a, a lot, there's a great percentage of people, like, and this is just, just, just like a guess, but like, I, I think like, like while you were saying that about the million, like I was like thinking like, Ten a thousand percent interest. Like, if you gave me a million dollars today, I would totally pay you back ten million by in a hundred years. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Exactly. I think, I think a lot of people would. Exactly. They yeah. want it now. You know. Yeah. So it's it's funny. It's just you know we want to have that relationship where we're we're a capital access, where you know we're a capital source, where you know we're a business solution to to help you grow, to help you expand. Now sometimes people do need the money for a type of use of funding, which isn't optimal, in my opinion. Like. Oh, hey, I need flash cash for payroll, right? Now, why are you going to need a year term or something for payroll? You only need it yeah. for a couple of weeks, right? You know, to, you know, your other vendors pay you off or like if you're a construction company. Your job's going to pay you off in 30 days, 60 days, right? That's great. I never, I never thought of that. You know, so let's, what do you need to get this done? You need payroll, right? What's your payroll? $20,000 for the next month. What's your cost of materials? Okay, I can front about Forty thousand to eighty thousand dollars worth of materials. So I'm gonna need forty thousand for that. Are you renting any equipment now? Would you rather own it? What's it cost you to rent that equipment? Now, okay, you can buy that equipment for forty thousand. Right now, it's costing you, let's say, it's two thousand a week. Now, if I can get them a funding product that, let's say, it's even the same. It's the same to pay my pay my funding back as it costs to rent. But now they own that piece of equipment, right? But my point is, is Every business can use money. It's yeah. all about the use of funding yeah. and the timing for sure. Now, you know, you're not just going to give them money and have them purchase more inventory when they're already stock full of inventory or something like that. Why not say, hey, look, why don't you hire more people or do more marketing and sell that inventory faster? And then we can go. Well, right, but it's not really, you know, it's not really our jobs for, the, for us to. Exactly. To so the- now that's, you know, that's a bit into you know out outfield now we want to focus on the here and now yeah. and provide a current capital source and business solution right now now a lot of the times as i mentioned merchants don't understand how lending products work and how to really tailor the funding program to them so we have to have that communication back and forth about i know you need money i know you can use money there's money for you to be made otherwise you wouldn't be in business right why are you in business now how can we do this amicably you tell me you're the you're the owner here. Oh, you have a job for a month. It's going to pay you 30% on any money you invest in it now. Excellent. My money's nowhere close to that expensive. Take it. I'm happy with the return. I'm happy with the risk. You'll pay me back. Excellent. Now let's do this again because your business has grown now. I'm sure you like to grow as a business, right? Beautiful. We just have a great relationship as, you know, lender and business owner. No, uh, and then you you're really taking a step a step forward i mean a, a extra steps like mm-hmm. you're actually like being like a consultant to these guys like it sounds like you know because a lot of them they just don't know how well you know how flexible we can be and we will accommodate all kinds of situations now if you're you know if you own a property outright you have access to bank lines of credit 
and you have 800 credit and you've been in business for 20 years and you have $500,000 in the bank, you might not need my service, right? But what about, you know, half, half of all employees in the United States, I think, are you know, employed by small business owners. There's like 40 million small businesses. Obviously, I want to, you know, help as many as I can within reason. I'm one person. Yeah. Uh, but not, you know, not all those people fit into that kind of credit bracket. Yeah. And we can accommodate you. Like, hey, look, if you do have 500 credit, you've not been in business that long, but you still, you still perform. You're still a healthy business. There's still a use of funding. There's still capital expenditures for you to help grow the business. Let's do it. I, I care about your business. I don't necessarily care about, like, more of the credit risk parameters. I, I'm tailored the funding to your use of it. My approach is, and I'm definitely not saying that you should do this. I probably think you shouldn't do this. But, like, mm-hmm. my approach, my attitude when, when a business owner comes in is, and I don't say this to them, but, like, my, my approach is, like, my attitude, I guess, is, like, you're going to take funding, whether if it's for me or someone else, you're going to take it. They're, they're looking into it, so they're going to take money from someone. Exactly. They're, going to take, they're going to take funding from someone else? or, or, it's, or it's, well, The question is, is it with me or is it with someone else? So mm. I'm not trying to like, be a high-pressure you know, salesperson or something like that. Mm. In fact, I'm actually trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to let you know up front that, okay, there's a good chance that you're going to be funded you know, soon. Like, I know you need this. Mm-hmm. Um, just work with me because I have the, you know, I have better relationships. I have better mm. programs, you know. Um, better relationships, be- better knowledge about the different lending products, which I think is probably the most important when it comes to communicating with the merchants. Like, you know, this yeah. is how this works, you yeah. know. What is a merchant cash advance? A merchant cash advance is, is a purchase and sales agreement of future receivables. So. Is it a loan? No, it is not. Merchant cash no. advance is not a loan. I was just checking. I just I, that, that question came up. I had to ask that. <laughs> um, what is it? What's the difference between a, a a direct lender? I mean, I mean, the difference between a direct lender and uh, a broker. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, that's a. It's actually pretty nuanced. Um, what's the word mean? I don't have to. Direct know. lender and the broker. It's it's an interesting question because um, the merchants don't really even know. Now the direct lender is you know just to go back to basics here direct lender is the the lending company that wires you the money yeah. for your capital needs and then they withdraw the achs out automatically to pay themselves back now at face value that's the most important difference now when it comes to working with a direct lender or working or excuse me working with a broker versus you know working with a direct lender you know assumably once you've established a relationship with them it would be it's it's hard to explain. Like working with a broker, it depends on the relationships that broker has with different lenders. Um, that broker's uh, knowledge of your file, right? Um, I would say the broker's ability to manage you, your expectations, and manage your relationship with the lenders, right? And then working with a direct lender is where you can, you might be able to get a bit more fancy. Like, hey, you know, we've had this relationship established. And especially with the lender like mine, where we are, we're across the entire spectrum. You know, as you said, we're, we're one of the biggest, if not one of the biggest in the commercial lending space. So we accommodate. Kind of what I hear you guys doing like 70, 80 million a month. Yeah. In August, we funded $115 million. Um, I don't know the numbers for September. No, yeah, it blows my mind too. So in August we I funded. Even say that number. Yeah, in yeah. August we funded 115 million dollars according to um, the big boss, the big big boss. Yeah. Um, and it's just uh, you know we're growing. I think it was in the 70 to 80 earlier in the year, probably like March. That's probably last time I heard. About yeah, it. exactly. So we're funding. You know, high amounts. Let's just leave it at that. We're one of the biggest. I never heard anyone doing a hundred, so that's no, yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's Not even like biggest. Fundry. I, yeah. Maybe Fundry might compete with us or something. Like I that. mean, as far as I know, you're the biggest. Yeah. Like I never heard anyone doing hundred. Yeah. So, just just that being said, we're one of the biggest. So obviously that implies you know we have the biggest sets of programs. So whether you're a, you know, let's think of credit and 
you know, business strength and stuff like that. Like, just to put those metrics and make it easier for everyone to understand. We'll do A to F on a great scale. <laughs> okay. We'll do it all. Now, it depends on, again, probably most importantly is just the use of funding. We want to invest in a company's growth. What, so what do you mean that opportunity is there? We want to work with them. So A being, you know, immaculate, just, you know, 800 credit, high, you have, you know, you have high capital held in the account, your cash, you know, you're very cash positive. You've been making money as a business for a long time. No, are, are, are you industry. suggesting, are you suggesting that you are grading these business owners based on their business but through, through, a, through a school grading system? No, it's just to make interested? it easier for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now to make it easy for you know everyone to understand you know there's so many different kinds of businesses that it would be hard to get very granular like oh hey this you know this transportation company is in this certain type of industry and you know they have this certain type of model of truck in their fleet and they have three of them and you know their drivers only drive you know about two hours more than the average drive you know it's it's silly so you know we care about the business <laughs> performance and the hard numbers right so um, or this guy only flips his inventory this often. Like, it'd, it'd be it'd be silly. Um, oh oh, you, your business idea sucks. You yeah. Get an F. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about credit grade here, um, and the way to think about that is you know simply from kind of like a just work with the numbers here. Bit bit of nuance like how long has the owner been in business? How long has he been doing this? How profitable has the business been recently? Is it seasonal? What type of industry is it? Is it more of a risky industry with, you know, it's very high risk, high reward? Is it more of an established type of business? How many locations are there? Is the owner himself a credit worthy applicant? Things like that. So even if you're not, even if you've had had trouble with your credit in the past, even if you've maybe not been as profitable as you as you have been in the past, and that's why you might be looking for funding now. You want to, you recognize the rut you recognize an opportunity maybe after you've been in a rut in a while and you want to take advantage of, of a capital injection and really, you know, pick the business back up. Or you just want to invest, but you've had trouble with this in the past just because you haven't had relationships with, say, lenders, you might not have the, the thickest credit profile, it's a bit thin, things like that, or you're a newer business. Yeah, so, so I, I think what you're trying to say is, I, I think there's like, I think there was like 32 million businesses in America or something last time. It, right? Yeah, so, exactly. So, there's a, there's, what, you're trying to, what you're trying to say is like, there's a wide variety. Of, there's, yeah, exactly. And there wouldn't be like, top of the, of the top underwriting, like teams, like teams spread out across the country. Like literally all they do is like work on your file. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be that if, if it was like so simple as picking a number or I don't know or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. But like... You know, we actually uh, work on this, um, mm. but uh, I guess I guess where I'm where I'm going with this, like, um, I guess I spoke with my family. Um, I had a I had a cousin come in. Mm. I had a cousin explain like I, I tell I mean this industry I tell everyone about it because I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great industry and it opens up doors to business owners who didn't have funding before or exactly. didn't get a chance to get funding before, um, but. As far as, I mean, I, I spoke to my cousin and he was like, oh, okay, I see, I get it. So you basically don't do shit. <laughs> and I'm like, too. yeah. Um, and then I had another, I uh, actually had a, last week um, or this week, um, a, a friend flew, uh, flew over from our home country, my mom's friend. And so he, he, he's, a, he, he's in business. He has his own publishing company, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where he produces books. Um, and so he, he was like, I like it in the fact that you don't have any risk. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're not, you're not, you're not giving out like me, myself, I'm not giving out oh. that much capital. Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't need the, the merchant to really, you know, pay me back, which, which I appreciate having a good relationship with the lenders that I work with. Mm -hmm. But you know, he, he was kind of saying like, I don't have any risk. Um, so what I'm trying to say is I guess everyone could like, it's not, it doesn't really take much to become a broker these days. Mm -hmm. So I guess you want to trust, like if you're a business owner, you want to trust, you want to make sure you trust who you're you working trust with. trust your broker. Yeah, and yeah. to that point, it is important to be able to trust your broker. And sometimes that is a, a hurdle. Like I hear it as a direct lender all the time. Like, oh, hey, you know, last time I did this, my broker shot my file around 
and he lied to me. He said he was going to be able to do this, that, or the other. And you know, now I'm dealing with the situation I'm in now, whatever it might be. Let's say it's worse credit than he would have had, or, or you know, maybe he. And we've seen this before with certain brokers, like. For, for example, my company, we don't allow brokers to charge broker fees. But listen, most of the time, those, those, those business owners that have those bad experiences, it's because their file is bad. It's because their business oh, is bad. Oh, that too. No, yeah. But like, you know, exactly. So things like that, um, like for example, uh, like what I was saying, like we don't allow brokers to charge PSFs or professional services fees, uh, broker fees, things like that. So a broker might go with another product right or another lender that might not be able to uh, you know accommodate the merchant as well as we would have had all right all right put, put away put, put aside the, put aside the fact that you're a direct lender uh -huh. if a direct lender doesn't want to fund something mm -hmm. what, what do they do with the where does it go what is it what oh is it well it might have lender? to go to a more aggressive lender maybe okay. a more aggressive partner so you're basically brokering it up what do you mean with us? Oh, I, I thought mean, you meant yeah, as yeah. as a broker's perspective. No, I mean just just put away this. Put aside the fact that you're a direct lender, and if if you didn't, if let's say you didn't want to fund someone, right? Yeah. Like they had a really bad credit score, for example. Like they had no credit, or oh, okay. they just defaulted on their house or something. Like it's just like, like just something crazy. Yeah, yeah. something crazy. Right? Um, what what would you like? You you would broker the file out, right? Like you would try to still get get capital for the. the Depends. Business. Like we. We can reach out to a partner lender that we have relationships with and give them the gist of the foul, reach out to the merchant and say, hey, look, well, first we want to see like, you know, why they got the client, right? Yeah. So if it's something like obscene, like an obscene derogatory item, I just defaulted on four lenders yesterday, which has happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Imagine. dude, this, no one's doing this. Like yeah. leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get you, but um, I guess like, but yeah, uh, depending on the file, um, we can reach out to the merchant, let him let him know why he was declined in house, and if he might be interested in working with a more aggressive partner of ours, and still maintain the relationship with us. Depending on, you know, we kind of grade this in two ways, like a soft decline, like, hey, look, your revenue, in the recent couple months just wasn't high enough for us to accommodate the program you were looking for but um, you know one of our partners might actually be able to accommodate you here yeah so we want to keep you in-house in-house relationship and actually facilitate the funding through our partner no fees at all whatsoever you won't be working with the broker get shopped around so we're giving you the heads up now right are you interested in us having to reach out to the partner to still get this done for you. And a lot of merchants appreciate that and they want to maintain the relationship and they'll they'll work. They'll work on that. So that that does happen. I like you how know. you said that very yeah. professionally. What he, what he's really trying to say is he's he's also a broker. That's what he's trying to say. No. <laughs> I mean you know what you know what I tell merch you know what I tell business owners? I tell them look, I mean you go to a direct lender, they're just gonna charge you the base rate. If you go to you work with a broker, i by the way, guys, if you can't tell, I'm a broker. I'm a broker here, <laughs> cash, merchant cash advance broker. Um, if you go to a direct lender, you're just gonna charge you the base rate. But if you work with a broker, obviously they're gonna get you the best deal, right? And usually they agree with that. You know, even mm -hmm. bad experiences are not usually. I can. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, I get exactly. Especially probably on the highest grade credit. You know. I mean, I have one guy like you know like. I mean, I didn't get into it, but never mind. <laughs> he was like he was like bitching about the the, the rate and he's like there's no difference between you guys I just want to go with whoever's cheapest and I'm like okay kick rocks like <laughs> I'm not always gonna you know like I mean when 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 you when you come to me say look I got I'm working with six different lenders and here are the offers I got I need you to beat this I'm like dude take that deal like right go take that deal I I can't I can't like the stress that it would cause like the annoyance. <laughs> Like trying to, you know, uh, like just just go take that deal, honestly. But uh, I mean, if you could use more, if you wanted me to come behind, then we then we can mm -hmm. we then we can have a discussion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's where you can get fancy too. 
So you can get it pretty fancy both as a broker and as a direct lender. So there are costs, there, there are pros and cons to both. Like, you know, as I explained earlier with the relationship with a direct lender or, or you yourself where, you know, you can work on beating a deal if the merchant's, you know, only concern is I want the absolute best deal possible. And yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and like, and like we, like they, they, they can sometimes like not understand how serious it is like how serious what we do is like what we talk about underwriting guidelines and mm-hmm. like what you, what you just mentioned but like they even took off cojs like mm-hmm. they they took off like judgments um which used to be yeah confessions uh, of judgment yeah. that used to be like you can literally walk into uh dist- i don't know district dist- county Florida, yeah, whatever yeah, or, um you could say look i'm this guy owes me money i want to freeze his bank accounts or something like that or yeah. you know I'll, basically, they had, they had a lot of lot of power to basically just take all your money um, if you weren't paying them. Um, but yeah, so some COJs I've seen were like, if you miss five payments over the course right, of the right. advance, they could file the COJ. Right, it's there to protect them, yeah. and and it's clearly outlined in the agreements. Like it's a separate yeah, it's, yeah. The, the deal that I've seen it's literally a separate. There's the initial contract, and then there's the affidavit of confession and judgment, like separate. Yeah. But I, what, I, what I'm saying is like th- that was there to protect them. Mm-hmm. And the, I mean, the lenders, the, the, CO, the confession of judgment yeah. that protect the lenders. Um, but even though it was clearly outlined what the conditions of default mean, mm-hmm. um, what I'm trying to say is, is like, even with, they took off the COJs and this industry is still, you know, you're, you're growing. You're, you were oh, yeah, before, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you noticed a, like a change in... Um, before and after COJs? No. Yeah. Like any impact like, after they pass the bill? Not really. Like, I know there was a big hurrah about it, like, in, you know, whatever media presence we do yeah. have as a sort of, you know, MCA, your commercial lending, the space, right? It was this big hurrah. Oh, my God, COJs are getting rid of, you know, all these lenders are going to die. They're not going to be able to... What? What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, there's no real difference at all. The ability to fund is still there. We're going to be as aggressive and as conservative and lend to the same business owner like the capital is here the need for the capital is there this is a booming economy trillions of dollars are flowing in and out in the united states there is definitely a space for this whether or not yeah a piece of paper <laughs> yeah all the bill said was if if you it, you can't file a coj against someone that doesn't live in new york that doesn't have business in new york yeah but you can still file against someone in new york mm-hmm so oh yeah yeah it's you can't do interstate coj yeah exactly yeah but like there's still some states like i know pars in uh, philadelphia yeah they could still do uh cojs but there's really no difference there's no yeah, yeah. we don't do cojs at all like yeah because th- there's no reason for it you know um yeah does it afford the lender a bit more protection sure but our you know protection is for a small amount yeah. right so, so our, really our interest a- is is in growth growth of the business growth for us as a company you know, we want yeah. to have that enterprise value, you know, yeah. be the go-to, be a big company and works with a lot of businesses. We're very flexible too. So we're here. Is the COJ law really going to change anything? I mean, come on. I mean, it's already passed, you know? Yeah. And there's exactly. been no change, right? Is that, what you're saying? that is my there's point. No yeah. Right? There's, it's silly. I mean, w- one thing that I, I take away from COJs having no effect is that it really, I guess, doesn't matter what you do what everyone else does, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a great product, especially, I mean, this is, this is like kind of a lesson to the, to the, to the audience watching, mm-hmm. but if you have a great, like this is, I think a, ta- a takeaway we can take from this. Yeah. Uh, like if you have a great product, especially you, because I par does it every, better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like I think in, I think so in, in the high risk, uh, in the high risk sector, mm-hmm. par does it better than everybody else. But you know, they're, they're more for a con- second positions and consolidations, which, which we'll get to in yeah. a minute. Um, but it's really like, I feel like it's really just about like, you know, getting into going into the marketplace and getting your product. If you have a great product, getting your product out into the marketplace, no, no matter what. And exposed. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. And so, but you know, I, like Grant Cardone, you know, Grant Cardone, um, mm-hmm. he says, uh, he says it's your moral responsibility to go out into the marketplace. If you believe you have a great product, which I think we do, I think yeah. we have a great product. So let's talk about consolidations. Okay, so yeah, the consolidation program that we have. I want you to explain it because I think you explained it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
we have, you know, very, you know, huge variety of different programs, right? And ability to accommodate and tailor each and every program. But the most important and probably my favorite program is um, the consolidation program that we do. So um, this is a really important type of program that we have that can pretty much save a business and really turn it around. So to outline the situation that the business owner is in, the business owner has lending product A with one lender and it goes out for another, let's say it's five months, right? Weekly payments on this one, right? Then they ended up needing more capital. They took more money from a second lender, they ended up, you know, they have payments on that one. This time it was higher risk, second position, daily payments now, higher rate, more expensive dollar or, you know, cents on the dollar money. Sometimes there's a third. Sometimes there's a fourth or fifth. I've seen files with, you know, 11 cash advances. And, you know, as may, you know, it's intuitive, each and every cash advance additional that you have on top of one that you're already paying is more risk to the lender and is going to be at a higher rate, right? So we sometimes call position. a position, I call them positions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cash, you know, same thing. But yeah, yeah, exactly. So positions, cause uh, some, some of them could be like a term loan product from on debt capital or something like that. So to outline the consolidation program, um, this is the situation to just to give you an idea. So the merchant or the business owner has uh, multiple positions, right? You know, let's say, you know, it's two cash advances or, you know, two business loans, two types of commercial lending products or more, let's say three, four, five, six, I've even seen as many as 11 different cash advances. Um, what we do as a lender is that we, we can consolidate that, right? So it depends on the term that is left and how long it goes out for and, you know, we want to fit into some risk parameters. So what we can do is actually get really creative. We look at all the different funding um, payments and structures that are going down as is. Let's, let's say it's four. You have four, and just to make it easier to explain, let's say they all go out for about five months and your total payments come out to about, you know, a mix between weekly and daily payments, they all come out to about $5,000 a week in, in uh, debt service, right? Gotcha. So what we can do, we can get creative and it depends. So, so each that, and every deal is different. So it all depends yeah. on the numbers for the funding itself. So, 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 so the cost of the debt service. Just so everybody watching is on board. Mm -hmm. So this guy, based, I mean, your, your hypothetical example, took out five different loans at five different times. Mm -hmm. Like I, they were all at different different times. Of exactly, the exactly. Yeah. So he, uh, the, the business owner took out five different um, business, business lending products at different times and he has a certain amount of time left to pay them back you know a certain remaining balance yeah. and his debt service is x amount now which turned in turns into about five thousand which out of turns into yeah. you know just to play with numbers five thousand or ten thousand whatever it yeah. might be right so what we do is that we deposit money into the account to cover the cost of the debt service five thousand a week let's say it's five thousand yeah. a week i'll we will wire five thousand a week into the account each and every week up until they're paid off. Now, what ends up happening is that my, one might uh, you know, get paid off sooner than another, things like that. So we'll adjust the deposits accordingly, right? So that's why every deal is different. Um, that's how it works. So in return, what we do is that we'll establish a new a withdrawal to pay back our deposit, you know, to move them away from the situation that they're in. So they're, work, they're going from working with this example, you know, five lenders, multiple lenders to one with us. We want to get the others out of the way. We want to make sure their debt service is paid. No one's, you know, doing any judgments. No one's, everyone's getting paid on time. Everyone's happy. Now we're just getting you backpedaling away from the situation you're in with the multiple lenders. And what this does is that since you're not making as much payments as you were, you know, before a consolidation program, now you have all, you know, all that capital that would otherwise have been going to payments, you know, back and available for cash flow to be reinvested into the business. And mm -hmm. what we could do as well is actually provide a, you know, or attach uh, like a sort of business uh, revolving credit product 
to that program as well mm-hmm. that is always cheaper than whatever they might be able to get an additional funding in a situation they're in. So no, 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 no. Dude, if you have five advances, it's definitely cheaper. But yeah, to be fair, I know, I know, I know. One, uh, look, I'm not gonna mention your name, but they'll do. You know, it doesn't matter which position. They'll do it for 12 months, 25K, no more than 25K. No more, oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so I guess deal by deal. So yeah, to be fair, there might be some some specialty lender that will do something like that. But the goal here is to get them out of the position that they're in, free up all this capital, be reinvested in the business, and then extend the term. So yeah, yeah. what we do is that, look, you know, we can't do the consolidation for free, right? Um, so they are paying back more in total, but the savings, significantly bridges the gap between the cost of the consolidation and um, you know what they originally had in balance. So we free up that capital now to be reinvested in the business now and we provide a cheap credit uh, cheap credit product available maybe not immediately in the consolidation program just because we don't want the merchant to have too much debt, right? The whole point of the program is to get them out of debt in an efficient way to you know, free up more cash flow, get them out of the ruts, that way they can reinvest that money in the business. And then later on, get them access to just better products than what they would be seeing if they just kept going, paying off these other lenders. Sometimes they get reloaded. Like, you know, I've seen this with, honestly, too many different, um, too many different owners to, to speak of at this point, really. They just keep reloading, they find themselves in the rut. Oh man, this guy doesn't want to reload me. I'm gonna go with my fourth yeah. MCA now, but, and then it just becomes. You but know. talk about the savings. Like, how much can you actually save with that consolidation? Oh, okay, yeah. To circle back, so we average um, anywhere from a 25 to 50 percent payment reduction on a daily basis. So let's say you know you're making five thousand dollars in payments a week. Uh, the daily payment would look to be about a thousand dollars because payments are withdrawn Monday through Friday. You know, no weekends, no holidays. And you know we would cut that down anywhere from a thousand to seven fifty, or to five hundred dollars a day, right? So that's you know in this case two hundred fifty to five hundred dollars every day that you would have more to be reinvested into the business. Now, right. what's cool about the consolidation program as well for the merchants who, you know, they don't like the idea of you know restructuring debt and having to pay more on debt they already have. Um, right, so some some of that might not necessarily be intuitive if they're comfortable with the payments. But what's cool about that consolidation program as well is that the capital is cheap. The disbursement hits every week until all the other payments fall off. And in the meantime, you have access to our product and one of our best ones too, which is the you know as mentioned the revolving uh, business credit line. The capital on that is very yeah. cheap. So especially if you compare yeah. it to some of the third, fourth fifth position cases even yeah and or more who, who's offering lines of credit to these and guys exactly yeah. who's offering a revolving line on weekly payments on high-risk positions now we can do that because we know everyone else is covered we're making those payments and now your new debt service is less so now you have you know theoretically a higher capacity to take on more payment for but you can get them the line of credit without the consolidation and oh yeah, yeah. and we can do that as well you yeah. can do that outside of the consolidation too which you know in so many cases, like I gave an example earlier of like we're able to tailor the, the products um, to the use of funding. So if you only needed the money for two, three, four months, right. we can get you that revolving credit product. And let's say after the four months are done, yeah. you want more money. Hey, look, you already have this credit product with us. So it was very cheap. We use it. Or or I have, or I have uh, three positions, three loans out. But I don't want to pay them off. I just want to get fifty thousand, you know, to to grow my yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can tailor the, the 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 credit product as well, just to be paid back quickly. Yeah, and still be cheap. So, especially you know, depending on the file, we can we can do something like that too. So I mean, yeah, we can go on with the we can go on and on with hypothetical examples. Exactly. Yeah, but, but the point is, it's a specialty product that only we can do. Really, I've seen other lenders try to mimic it. Like we've seen the deals that you know some merchants have given us as you know, hey, here's here's my counter offer from. Uh, I don't want to name other companies, but you know other company, you know other company A who tries to mimic our consolidation program. It's done horribly. It's very expensive, or they do it as a buyout, yeah. and the buyout is you know at a one you know like just one six all like some crazy price, 
Whereas, you know, we do, there's multiple reasons that we do a reverse. For one, there's more flexibility to it and it guarantees that it gets done. So there's, right, yeah. it's less risk to us as a lender because we're not taking up all the risk. Like you already accumulated all this debt across five lenders and then you might expect someone to come in behind that as you know, uh, as the, the sixth, fifth, seventh, eighth lender to buy all them out and make that cheaper for you, that, uh, that obviously doesn't make sense. Now, the reason we're able to do that is because we're so flexible and we can do it in the structured type of funding, right? We cover the payments for the week. Now, we're only exposed this much. Now, we gain the exposure as we pay them off on a weekly basis, and we know they're covered. The merchant's good for it. They're in a better position now, right? And let's say they did want more capital and they're comfortable with their current payments, which was the case for one of my biggest consolidation clients, actually. He took out four MCAs within like a two week period of time and wanted more money. No other lender was going to give him more money. We even reached out to partners. He wanted like another $500,000. So the program that we had set up was to do consolidation of his existing advances and then just do the, the weekly deposits and then do the line of credit product for him just as soon as he would get approved essentially. And that made sense because there's flexibility. You can use that deposit to either cover the payments and make that savings and reinvest that capital. Or if you're good for the payments, you're comfortable with it, maybe your withholding's not that high, you wanna use that deposit for something else, like let's say it's inventory purchase time, or you have a job coming up, you need to cover more materials, you have that flexibility because that you have that extra deposit, there's a payment on it, yeah, but it's much less than the other ones. And you can use that for whatever you can. And then you, you know you're good to go for the next week's deposit because we're, we're doing that, we're covering all the payments. All the other payments. Yeah, so let me ask you this though, because I want to talk about downfalls too. And I already know the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. But why don't you just pay them off like five different lenders, five different relationships? Yeah. Why don't you just pay them off all at once? <laughs> them all yeah, so yeah. as I explained, you know, some, I get that, I get that bulk that me, um, whenever I explain the consolidation program from, from business owners all the time, hey, look, why don't you just pay them all off at once and make it cheaper for me? Dude. You're asking me to take all this risk all at once on, on a whim because I trust you. Hey, look, why didn't all these other lenders do it, right? Just to think about it like on a person-to-person -person basis. Now, obviously, there's a way around that. Hey, look, you don't owe, you don't owe all, this lender, all these lenders their balances today. You owe them th this money you know, next week, right? Or if they're daily payments, you know, Monday through Friday. So here's what I can do. I can give you the money to cover them Monday through Friday, every right. week. They're not gonna come out and demand that you give it all at once. Exactly, and mm -hmm. as I mentioned, it's accomplishing the same goal. We're getting, we're getting them out of the way, Yeah. right? So I can do this, just not you know all at once, just because it doesn't make sense. Why, why am I gonna send them all the money all at once? Well, they don't need it all at once. They just mm -hmm. need you to pay it on the term that you agreed on. So I can honor that agreement for you. No one's going to default. I've had some people say, oh, I don't want to restructure my payments because then I go on default. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're making the payments for you. How? We're actually depositing the money into your bank account every week. You have, in my earlier example, $5,000 a week that you need to make payments for. I'm depositing $5,000 a week into your business bank account. Now my payment's going to be 50% less. You're saving that difference between the $5,000 a week and $2,500 that you would owe me in this case, right? Yeah. Now, 2500 a week goes out for a longer period of time. Now, the benefit of that is now you have that difference between the period of time that you had to have made that $5,000 a week payment to all these other lenders to having one relationship with one of the best lenders. I think we're the best lender in this space with the, one of the best abilities to really tailor a product to your funding needs instead of having to go and... Oh, I just need the best longest term deal for the most amount of money for this use of funding that I only need it for a month, but I'm taking a year term loan out for, for no reason and I'm paying an obscene amount of money for it. Why? Because then you find yourself in the situation again, oh, I'm still making payments on that loan I took out a, uh, you know, you know, uh, six months ago. It's as if, it's as if they're, they're entitled to it. Like they made, they made previous mistakes. And it, do it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, I say that too. Like, look, I'm, 
I don't want to wear the black eye for what someone else did to you. Yeah. So that's another reason. Like, I don't want to wear the black eye for what someone else did to you. I also don't want to pay for it either, right? I don't want to pay them all off all at once, take all this risk. Like, let's say you have $500,000 in debt. Hey, look, you're asking me to risk all the $500,000 up front at once. Why don't I just why you, you know, I think the numbers on that might look like, you know, $50,000 a week in payments or something like that. Actually, maybe a bit less, like 25 something. It, I'm just spitballing the numbers at this point. I can just cover your weekly debt service and you pay me back at the same time. So what it looks like on paper is you're getting half a million. Is that you're getting half a million. You're honoring the, the same half a million worth of debt that you had before. It's less risky mm -hmm. to me. I can make it cheaper for that reason. So the biggest yeah. imp importance yeah. for a lender is the risk on the money. So as a lender, it's less risky for me to do it this way. It accomplishes the same goal and as an added benefit, there's more flexibility to it because it's not money that went to the lenders. It's money that went to your business bank account, right? Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to use that money for anything else that's not necessarily consolidating the other payments, which you know obviously when we do this, we want them to consolidate yeah, yeah. the payments, but things change in business all the time. An opportunity might Five thousand. That's a that's a trip to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously they're not doing that. Uh, I hope not. Um, but look, let's say they wanted to purchase more inventory because you know things change in the business. Or hey, look, a vehicle needs repairs right now. Oh, hey, I have that that weekly deposit coming in from par. I can cover that no problem. I don't need to go get another cash advance from someone else at a ridiculous rate. And then continue the cycle or, you know, end up in a place where you can't support the payments. And unfortunately, that does happen, right? Where something happens in the business and, you know, your contract just just, uh, just didn't get renewed. i seen this with a guy who did a hotel maintenance. Excellent fuck. I had excellent credit, but he was stacked up and his contract didn't get renewed. His revenue tanked by like 70%. It was it was a horrible story, and then he came to us for a consolidation, and it just wasn't possible. He was too over levered. It, was, it sucked to see that situation. I asked him what his use of funding was for. He took out like a one year deal to fund a project that he only needed two months for. I asked him why'd you do that. He was like, it was the best deal. I'm like, no, it wasn't. You didn't need the money for that long, and you're, you're still paying on it. Why? But look, I, I've said it before. I really like your product, products, your programs. I I think you have the best, the best consolidation. Oh, not that. yeah, by far. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she got his face when he said that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by, by far. far. Let's, uh, let's talk about your ISO program. How, how do people work with you? How do they do business with you? Like, okay, so yeah, if a broker wanted to work with me, uh, they could just reach out. Well, me. a broker is what? A broker is someone that works with... Or an ISO, an independent sales office. Or someone who works... Yeah, they would submit um, to myself. To but would they, they, they're the ones that work with business owners. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So they would, you know, they would have the relationship with the with the with the business owner, right? Yeah. But obviously, they need a lender. So if they wanted access to, um, they could be programs, an accountant or something. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So if anyone wanted to reach me for just about anything, I'd be more than happy to help and answer any questions. But you know, including no, I'm just saying thing. it could be anyone. Someone that works with business owners. How do they? They, they let's say let's say if I have a business owner, mm -hmm. right? If I was if I was uh, Andy the camera guy, mm -hmm. um, if I had a business owner, if I knew a business owner, and then I wanted to help him, but I also wanted to get paid for it, oh, okay. or referring yeah. the business to you, how, like how would they go about doing that? Well, you would have to call me, uh, okay. three four seven six nine nine eight zero three five. Ideally, text me right beforehand. One name, time. introduction, um, your number, your email. What's your number again? Yes, yeah, three four seven uh, three four seven six nine nine eight zero three five. And you can email me as well. It's a Kalemis at fastadvancefunding.com. Um, ideally, call and text me. Uh, we'll schedule a call, go over all the what the ISO agreement entails, and we can work from there. Even if you don't have an established ISO agreement with us, we'll still honor a commission payout. So if you need a deal funded now and you want it done through one of our programs, we can, we can make the exception and develop the relationship from there with, with an established ISO agreement. Um, gotcha. Just uh, reach me anytime that number goes to my side. Because you know, there are a lot of offices that you might not, never heard of their name, but they exactly. could be funding like a million a month. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so if you want access to our programs, reach out. Yeah, that, 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 business, that business should be going to you because you have, mm -hmm. you have, you have the best programs. Exactly, yeah. Right? So if, if, they're, if, they're, if the ISO is funding uh, 
half a million, you know, I want them to reach out to you mm-hmm. um, because you have some of the top programs, you know, mm-hmm. for, for, for business owners to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'd be more than happy to coach on any programs as well. Uh, that, you know, because everything's file dependent, like, you know, how the deal looks like at that point in time. More than happy to help out. So, so, so you can call, uh, text him, text him to his cell, uh, to his number, or send him an email. He'll he'll uh, he'll get t- take good care of you. Yeah. He'll set you up. All right. So I think we, we covered just about enough. Um, mm-hmm. Guys, if you if you guys guys, thank you for watching the show. It's our first episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's a new show that I'm kind of experimenting. You know, getting other people's uh, stories um, from where they could, because because Andreas, I. I He's a pretty successful guy, you know, so, and if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get updated on my future videos. Um, and if you guys missed this in my, in my last video, I, I said my number one piece of advice for all small businesses out there is to smash the like button. <laughs> hey, um, and about a little bit about me, a little bit about me, uh, I, I run, I run a funding company like, like, uh, like Andreas here, we both have funding companies. Uh, where we help small business owners uh, achieve their goals through a variety of creative financing products. Only difference between me and him is he's the direct lender, I'm a broker. I would send the file to him. Um, you know, that's what I would do. So if you guys want to reach me, all my contact info is obviously in the description. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, my social links are below. Um, stay in touch, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.